Hey everybody, this is Alex Merced from alexmercedcoder.com and in this video what I want to do is basically talk about all the different ways you can style React code. Okay, so basically what we're going to do is create a new React project. So I'm going to open up a new terminal, do npx create React app. And again, I'm assuming you're using create React app. If you're using some other React template, some things might work a little bit differently, particularly like whether SAS is configured out of the box or not. Um, but I would say most of the time it will be. NPX create React app. Um, we'll just call this styling. Okay, because there's a lot of different approaches you can take when you want to style in React. First, we'll just talk about sort of like the ways that are sort of built into uh, React or specifically the create React app template. So giving it a second. Do, 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 do. Cool. Okay. So here's that styling one. And then I'm going to CD into styling to npm start to start this particular React project. There it is. Let me close some of these. Okay, put that to the side. Put this to the side. Take some more space. Let's move that down for a moment. Let's head over to our app component. Again, I'm assuming you already know how to react, you know, so this is not a re uh, intro to react lesson. So you should kind of know that I'm clearing out the app component and what that means and all that stuff. What we're going to do is we're just going to do an H1 that says hello world. And we'll just kind of talk about the different ways to style it. So one way to style it is, is just an inline style, okay, and which actually works pretty well in React. Then what you can do is you can um, you could just go to any HTML tag or any component, and what you do is you just put a uh, style property, and then in the style property, we're going to pass in the JSX an object, and I can do something like color red, and see now that's going to be red. But now here's where things get interesting. If it's a property that normally would get like a kebab, so let's say something like background color. So if I want to do background color, I do comma because it's an object. So we do background. Normally it would be background color. But since this is JavaScript world, it's background color, camel case. And we'll say um, gray. Okay, let's see to get that. Oh, I forgot the D, background color. And see, we got background color with the color red. So that's one way you could style it. That's called an inline style. So it's literally like, I can do that in the div, I can do that in the H1. All I do is I add this style property, and then I put in the styles that I want. That's one way. Another way is I could use a class, just like a normal CSS class. So I just do class name. So again, keep that in mind that in React you don't write class, you write class name. So you do class name equals cheese, why not? And then any CSS file you have will work. CSS files are not scoped in React, or at least not in your out of the box with Create React app. So I can just kind of go in here in the index.css. I could do it in the app.css. They're all global CSS. So I can just kind of go in here and say, hey, I want to style cheese and do the same thing in a normal CSS way. Be like, okay, I want the color to be red and I want the background color to be gray. Okay, then I'll get the same result. So those, those are available to you out of the box without having to do anything, okay? You could write in that CSS file, you could do the inline styles right out of the box. Now some other options you have, okay? So I'm gonna turn off the server for a second. What we can do is we can do SAS, we can, which is like a, a CSS compiler. Like under the hood, React is already set up to use SAS if you want. All you have to do is install npm install SAS. And then what we'll do is we'll rename this. Oh, actually, I'll just create a whole new file. New file, we'll call this styles.scss. That's the SAS extension. I can just imp I'll just change this from instead of importing index.css, we'll import styles.css, scss. Okay, so now when I'm taking a look at app, I can still style cheese, but I'd style it inside this SAS file. And I can be more specific because if I take a look at this, 
go back to app, see this h1 is inside of this div called app. So I can say, hey, a div instead of an h1, and I can write it like this. So in a div called with the class of app, if there is an h1 with the class of cheese, so you can do nested styles, which is pretty cool. Okay, we can do a color of red. Okay. And, oh, I'm still, I'm doing this in the CSS file. Let me cut, this, cut that out. I want to do this in the SCSS file, styles.scss. See, now it's not complaining because it's sass. Color, background, color, gray. And see, like, that's pretty cool. See, I can nest the style instead of another. See, for me to do this in CSS, I'd have to write like this. Like, I go back to the next CSS, I'd have to write div.app, h1.cheese, and then do the style, which is fine. The thing is that I'd have to write a separate file for something that applies to just div.app. Well, here, I could say something like this. I could say, hey, maybe I want, you know, anything inside the div to have a text color of red. Oops. I could add that style here. And then h1.cheese just inherits it. Uh, why is it not inheriting it? What did I do? Let's go back to app.js. Last name cheese. Did I get rid of the styles.scss? Oh, the server's not running. And pm start. Okay, and let's see here. There we go. Okay, so let's see here. Why are we not seeing the supply? Let's go take a here. So this is a div with a class name of app. Oh, it's uppercase. There's our issue. So this is gonna be uppercase, now this should work. And there it goes, cool. Cause see, this is an H, uh, let me just keep close this file cause keep opening it up by accident. So see, it's a div with a class name of app. And inside of that div, there's an H1 with the class of cheese. And that's what we got written here. See, and inside of a div with the class name of app, this style applies. And then nested in there's a, a style for an h1 with a class of cheese that's inside of a div called app but it also inherits the style because it's nested and that's kind of the beauty of like sass you can you can nest things there's other things you can do with sass but that's like my favorite thing you can also use variables but you can already use variables in css they work a little bit differently a little bit more easier but that's the beauty of sass it allows you just to have like write css in a little bit more flexible way okay next let's do npm install styled components. Let's try that out. So that's installed. Let's get the server running. And now let's do this. So I'm going to go back in here. I'm going to import styled from styled components. And the way this works is you can write other components. So the way this would work is you would just say const red gray h1 equals styled dot h1. Then we use backticks because this is what's called a ta tagged template literal. And you just write your styles here. So I'm going to say, hey, I want this component to be an h1 that has a color of red. So you write just like normal CSS, a background color of gray. And now I can just use this component. So this red gray H1 is now a component. So then I can replace this with red gray H1. And let's just refresh that. Oh, the server closed, shut off. NPM start. And see, you end up with the same result because this component renders an H1 that's red um, with gray background. Okay, so that's the, the, the styled components approach. You're creating a component that applies the styling and then you apply the text as the children. It's, it's pretty straightforward. 
Okay, you can style, make a styled H1, a styled div, a styled button, whatever you want. You just do it this way, and you're good to go. Um, cool. And then there's also like component libraries like React Strap. So let's see, npm install React Strap, which is like a React implementation of Bootstrap. So let me go to React Strap, look that up. Okay, so we just installed React Strap. Okay, we also have to make sure we add Bootstrap so that we get the styling. So we have to do npm install Bootstrap. That's the part that a lot of people forget, then they wonder why like React Strap like looks ugly. Because the thing is that like React Strap has components that has like all the classes applied, but it doesn't come with a style sheet for the classes. So I have to go back to my index.js. And then I'm going to add this line right here where I import bootstrap. So that way the styling is applied. And then I can go back over here to app and I just import the components I want to use. So I'll keep that there so that way it doesn't error. But let's say I want to use this button. I would just say import, import button from React Strap. And now I can use this button. Hello. And you can just do styling that way in the sense that you're using this component library that, that has everything kind of already pre-styled. You just have to read the documentation to learn like what's available. So this is gonna load up in a second. But you see there you have like a bootstrappy button. Okay, pre-styled, so there's that. There is also JSS, but I forgot how JSS works. So let's, re let's relearn that. npm install JSS. That's another option. And let me go back and look up how that works. It's been a while. JSS library. Okay. Port JSS here. Okay, and the way this works, you write your styles like this button passage right as a big object and then we're going to say const classes oh here here's a react example okay render create use styles oh we need to also install react JSS so let me install that npm install react JSS see we see that there so in that case, we write create use styles. So it's like a hook. Const use styles, create use styles. And here we're creating an object with all the styles. And then we, okay, we use the hook to bring in the classes. And then you inject the classes. Okay, that's, might as well just write an object. Okay. So this way this would work is first let me just start the server again. Now I would import create well first let's do this from JSS, React JSS, and it's like create use styles. Good. And then we say const, let's go back and look at how the example, const use styles equals my button. Okay, so let's just do this. Const classes, or no, const use styles equals create use styles. And we'll just say, hey, there's gonna be a class called cheese. And cheese is a style that is where the color is red. So this is pretty much like writing an inline style. One of the cool things is that you can use some other like hooks, like like pseudo selectors, and that gives you the ability to use some a little bit more sophisticated styling um, in your objects. Uh, color red, background color gray. Okay. Cool. 
So now I have to use the hook inside the component. So I would say const, I think that's how it's structuring in there. So const, not just const classes. So it'd be const classes equals use styles. Okay, and then I can just go over here and say, hey, um, make another h1 style. Or actually, let me see here, how do they do this? Classes, oh, they put it as a class name, interesting. Class name equals classes dot cheese because basically this object has all the styles we created up here, one of them being cheese. And then we close the H1 and we just put some words. And it should be, oh, is the server not running? I think the server's not running. So npm start. Okay, that extra H1 should be also red on gray. Yep, and there you go. See, we just did that with JSS. So these are all different options on how to style. So again, you can style using this approach with JSS. You can style using this approach with styled components. You can write inline blocks. You can use CSS files. You can use SAS. Um, the last one we'll look at is motion. So let's look up motion library. That was another. Actually, I don't think I've used this one before. So you'll be learning with me. And so we'll just install the library, control shift V, MPMI, add a motion CSS that's installing. And let's kind of see an example. Here's an example of the React. Oh, that's a special one for React. So let's do that. Okay. So let's see an example, add a motion React, CSS, JSX. Okay. And got it. CSS. Interesting. Now, why do we have to import the JSX piece? I don't see it being used anywhere. Let's see here. CSS plus this? Is it recommended for use of that framework? Best use React build. Uh, got it so you need this comment here so that's interesting okay so you copy this so if I bring that over here to I'll put this at the top Okay, so this basically tells Babel to use this instead of the normal JSX transform, which is interesting. I wonder if that'll have any effects with React 17. Um, and yeah, basically now I can do this. I can say in another H1, so we'll create another H1. Okay, and in this one, we'd be able to use like a CSS prop. So CSS equals, and then here we put a tag template literal, but this time the tag is CSS, not, you know, styled like in styled components. And I can write CSS again. So color red, but see, it looks, just looks like CSS. So this is a little bit more like styled components in a way. A color red, uh, background color gray and that should do it so that should also be let me see is my server running it's not it's not let me just start the server npm start and they should all be gray oh we got into an error fragment i think here's where we're gonna run into an issue with sort of the newer version yep right here cannot be set when the runtime is automatic that is because of the new React 17 runtime, the new Babel transform. So the change that we'd have to dig into the underhoods, but essentially that's what it would it would have worked. Um, but it looks like 
they have not addressed doing that with React 17. I wonder if they're going to mention that. Here are some other JavaScript and CSS libraries um, for me to learn more, but I think we'll cap it off at that. Um, but essentially, that's how it would work. You would just add this CSS prop in React, but unfortunately, since you have to use this custom transform, it interrupts with the new transform, which can be changed. Let me see if it lets me change it from here. Or am I going to have to actually like, yeah, I'm going to have to do an NPM. So to change that, what I, we have to do is you have to do an NPM run eject that'll eject React. That means it'll react to all like the, the Webpack and Babel settings. So, although I messed up that NPM run eject. Are you sure you want this action as permanent? Yes. Why I say no? Oh, it wants me to commit first. So, git add dot, git commit dash m, stuff. Okay, let's try that again now. Yes. So there, it just, see, I unpacked everything. So now we can see everything that's kind of under the hood. So now I can go to the Babel settings. We'll see where they are in a second. Probably in scripts or something. Build, config. Mm, okay, it's gonna be somewhere in here. And get HV, modules, pass, PMP, webpack, config. So we wanna look for like runtime automatic. So let's see here. Here we go. There's runtime automatic. Has JSX runtime. And here we'll just change this to classic, which will break some things because that's going to expect that React is imported. So now I need to import React from React for that to work. Okay, otherwise we should be good. Also just check over here. I think I also need to import React over here for this to work because it's the classic React. React from React. Where you have to import React everywhere. So let's do that. Now let's run the server. And see if we luck out now. Oh, I'm, I declared it twice somewhere. Where, oh, I already de I declared it twice in index. So let's get rid of that. Our React has already been declared. And yeah, okay, good, there it is. Okay, that last, let me go back to app.js. So that third H1, which is using uh, emotion works. But as you can see, for you to use emotion, at least this particular way, I mean, I guess you could use emotion in this, where was emotion? You could theoretically also use a motion like this, where you pass it as class name here. Um, which looks like it should also work. So it just depends how you want to set it up. Okay, but I'll leave it at that. My name is Alex Merced from alexmercedcoder.com. Have a great day. Make sure you join the Slack and Discord community over there at devnurse.com. Great day. Enjoy. Subscribe to the channel. I'll see you all later.